Hey guys, Tarko Cycling FPV, and today we are doing another um, uh, tutorial on uh, doing an X Lite radio. So we're going to do the X9 uh, Lite this time, uh, and we're going to do a brand new one. And I'm setting it up for a customer, another one who purchased a Sector 5. So every time I'm going to do something where it's a radio I haven't done or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and knock this out. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up the X9 Lite, but this time I've done it a little different. I created a page on the website now that all you have to do is click two files: the uh, companion three point, um, the companion. 2.3.7 download, and then I've put everything else in the SD card contents folder, and it's already been edited, everything's been taken out, and everything you need to set up the firmware for the XM Plus, firmware for the X Lite, and firmware for the um, OpenTX is all in this one folder, so it makes it super easy for you guys to download. And I'm gonna start doing this, is if you guys ever need this, please let me know. All you gotta do is hit me up, and by doing that, just go to our website, cyclonefb.com. You know what, I think I'm gonna edit this real quick. Hold on, let me see if I can edit this, because this really should be, um, I really want this like down here, I think. Yeah, that's better. So done. So let's let's try that. There we go. That's no longer cut. Um, so go to the contact page on our website. If you need a file, if you need something compressed, if you need all your links done, we're going to go ahead and do that for you. I've got a huge uh, download database of files, okay, for the last God knows how many years. So anything you need, we'll compile it for you and make sure you don't have to do all these steps anymore of downloading multiple files, setting them up and doing all that. I'm going to do all that for you from now on and try to make it easier, okay? So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and get started. Let's do our picture in picture here real quick. Boom, there we go. So I'm going to talk really fast, so you guys are going to slow this down. I'm trying. Uh, you can slow this down by, you know, just in your system, go and slow it down. I'm trying to get this done before the mail comes today so I can get this shipped out, okay? First thing we're going to do is we're just going to open uh, a brand new one. And uh, there we go. Okay, so we're going to get this X9 light out. All right, there it is. Uh, let's see. Let's take this out. And these, don't need those right now, so we're just going to put those aside. So like right there. Put the box on the ground. Take the radio out. Don't need the instruction manual, so we're going to put that away. Now what I do need, I'm going to take these out of my radio, is I'm going to, I, I do need the batteries. Oh uh, crap, I hope mine are charged. Hopefully they're charged. They should be charged. Yes. One second. Let me get my charged batteries. All right. So, sorry, that was an unexpected. I thought I were in my radio, but clearly they're not. So we're going to go ahead and put some 18650s in here. And guys, guys, if you don't have any 18650s, we have them on the website. By all means, feel free to check them out. So we're going to go ahead and remember, it is uh, positive goes this direction and ground goes this way. So if you're looking at your battery here, you've got your plus right here, and you've got your ground there, just put the batteries in this way. All right, and then on this side, it's the same direction, but you can put this side in first so you can push it back against the screen. There you go. Now what we're going to do is just... Hey guys, I don't know where that video cut. I had to stop it real quickly because I had a problem with the power button here and I did get it fixed now. Um, just have to open this up and, and, and situate it real quick. So here's what we're going to do now. So we've got the new X -Lite, uh, X9 Lite out of the box. We're going to go ahead and power it up real quick. Um, there we go. Okay. And we're going to make sure that we've got everything good to go here. So hopefully you can read this properly. All right. So um, what I've done is uh, I've, I've got the, um, uh, sorry, the uh, SD card, right? So this is one of the things we're going to need to set up uh, the uh, system properly. That's what I would recommend, right? So I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, okay, so when you take your SD card, right, and uh, this one, I just did a video on how to format the 64 gig down to 16 gig, so if you need to help with that, uh, please, uh, I'll put a link uh, so that you can watch this. Um, so we're gonna slide this in with the label of the card down, right, so that's gonna go in there properly just like that, okay? Now, I wanna show you a few things, uh, if I can get my little fat sausage fingers in there. there we Okay, right, there we go. So one of the things I want to do, right, is I'm going to show you, first of all, what we're looking for and what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be updating this to using OpenTX. Now, I'm going to be going a little fast in this, but you can always pause and slow down the video. I've had more people, you know, say, look, they'd rather just pause it and we can just make these faster. So we're going to go ahead and do that, right? First thing is this is brand new out of the box. Let's go ahead and hold the menu button down. And when we do that, you're going to see your menu screen come up here. And what we want you to do is just click page and click, keep clicking page until we get to um, right here, version, okay? So as you can see right here at the top, uh, sorry, I thought I could move this. The top is version 2.3.0 is what this says, right? So let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. You got 2.3.0 on the OpenTX X9 Lite, um, and it gives you the date. And then uh, let's see what else do we want to see. We want to see our module version, so let's go ahead and click that. We're using ISRM 1.1.1. Uh, we're actually going to update this too in the video, so hang tight for that one. And then uh, let's go back one, and then let's go to our EEPROM. Uh, no, we don't want to do an EEPROM back. Well, I did anyway. All right, fine. Um, so that's pretty much all that we care about right now on this. Uh, and, and then we can go ahead and set up our date and everything later. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to get started by plugging this into the computer and getting OpenTX to do it properly, okay? So here's what I've done that's really cool. Um, I did go ahead, and let me go ahead and uh, let me close everything down now. So I did go ahead and set up our website now. Um, so I want you to follow along. And if you can, by the time this video is up, you'll be able to, the web, the web page will be up for you with everything I'm showing. So let me go ahead and just do a picture in picture here. 
There we go. Okay, so here's our website, right? And then I've changed a few things around a little bit, but one of the things that I want you to do is I want you to go and I need to make sure this is visible. Let me make sure I click that tutorial to be visible. Uh, let's see, it is visible. Okay, good. So we, that should be it. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go down to um, your tutorials, right? So click this arrow and then go down to tutorials. And I think the newest one you're going to see, oh yeah, we did a live thing. Uh, let me, all right, uh, we want to do the, X, see this one right here, X9 light setup out of the box. So go ahead and click on that. Okay, and here's what I've done. This is the update which I've done today. This is the original content which I did a few uh, a few days ago or a few weeks ago. So instead what I've done now is I've compiled everything into two files only so you don't have to worry about anything else. So just follow these instructions and you're gonna be set. First thing is we want you to go ahead and click on the 2.3.7 download. So click on that and it's gonna automatically start installing. Now I've installed this 100 times but uh, let's do it with you guys so that you can see it how it works. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the X9 Lite SD card uh, contents, which are edited for 2.3.7. And in those, you have the firmware folder uh, and uh, a bunch of other files that you're going to need. So we're going to go ahead and click that as well. Both of these are going to end up in your downloads folder in Windows. And what we're going to want to do is create a folder where you can set these up on your own, okay, to where they're easy to find. Um, all right, so both files. So what you're going to do now is just click on this up arrow and just go show in folder and you're gonna see the files, and here they are, both of them right here. Now what I wanna do is, I wanna to go to my Documents folder, if I were you, and I'm gonna create a new folder, and I've already done this, see my X9 Lite right here? Um, what is in here, by the way? Yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna make a new one in my Documents folder, go to your Documents, and then come up to um, New Folder, this icon right here, click that, all right, and just, I'm gonna name mine X9 Lite Customer, all right, so let's do X9 Lite, and you name yours, uh, uh, I'm just gonna put customer on mine so I know it's different than the one I did. So we're gonna do that, right? Now, if we go to our downloads folder, we're gonna see those two files that we just downloaded. So uh, click on one and then hold the shift key down and click on the other one, right click on them both and click cut. Or basically what you wanna do is you wanna copy them over. So we're gonna go to our documents folder here and then our X9 Lite customer, we're gonna drop both of those in here, paste. Okay, so that's what we wanna do is we wanna uh, locate them here, right? Then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna click new uh, and you can click the folder up here. So once you're in your documents folder and in your X9 Lite customer folder, uh, you can click the new folder right here. And this one you're gonna call, um, let's just call it SD, uh, no, actually, tell you what, since we've done this, this is gonna be easy. Let me just delete this. Uh, you're gonna make a folder here, a uh, new folder, sorry, and just call it backup, okay? And we're gonna actually go ahead now and double click on, uh, right click on the SD card zip file and left click on extract all. And we're going to have this put here. It's a really small file because I've removed all the languages, all everything else that you don't need. And I've only put in the files that you need. Okay, so just watch how this is going to work. And here, let me do this like this. There, we'll just start with me. You can look at my ugly mug for just a minute while we do this. Okay, so I know I'm talking fast, guys, but really the, the instructions are simple. Just, uh, you know, go back and pause if you need to, or just look here. If you have any questions, just email me. Go to my website and go to the contact page at cyclonfp.com. Okay, and that's going to be in the bottom left uh, near under support. All right. All right, so anyways, we're going to do this real quick. Now, there is our file. Now, don't worry about this Mac OX. If you see this on here, it's because I did the work on, a, on one of my Macs. Um, so it puts this file here. You can just actually right-click on this and click Delete. All right, and it's going to be gone. Don't even worry about that. So if we go back to our customer folder now, you have your SD card contents, uh, the zip file. You have your 2.3.7. And the other thing is we have our SD card lie here. I just want you to right-click on that file, that folder, and just go to left-click on Rename and just call it SD uh, card. That's all you have to do, okay? Uh, once you do that, you're set. So we have our backup folder, SD card. Now we are, did I already run this executable? I don't think so. Well, maybe I did, hold on. I can't remember if I already told you guys to run it or not. So let me see. Uh, I don't think so, so we're gonna do it again. So if we haven't run the companion yet, let's just go ahead and run companion. So we're gonna double click on that. There we go. Yes, there we go. And just walk through the whole steps on running it, okay? Don't worry about that. Now, as of April 11th, 2020, these are the newest updates that I've put in your SD card contents folder. All the firmware, it's all in there, and these are brand new updates from now. So for 2.3.7, this folder is perfect for what you need. It's gonna ask you if you wanna run it, you can go ahead and click finish and open it. So it's gonna open the 2.3.7 right here. Okay, now, what we wanna do here is we're gonna go to settings and we're gonna go to radio profiles. Okay, so when you open this, go to settings right here, radio profiles, right? And then just do um, do something new. So just do add a radio profile. And what you wanna do now is you wanna just change this and say, I'm gonna call mine customer, uh, sorry, X9 Lite dash customer. X9 Lite dash customer, okay? 
and I'm going to drop down the radio until I find X9 light and make sure you select the right one. So here's X9 light. It's not the S, it's the X9 light. So click that and then just follow me. We'll explain all this later, but for right now, just put these one, two, three, four, just these four check boxes. Okay. Now that SD card folder that you created that we took that you renamed, click the select folder path here, go to your documents that you're going to go basically to the uh, X9 light folder you created. So uh, we created what an X9 light customer right here. And then in there's the SD card. That's the one you remain. So click on that once and click select folder. And then for the backup folder, click select folder again and go back to your uh, X9 light. So there's mine, X9 light customer, and then click backup one time. Make sure it's in the folder option here. Click select folder. Now on your, on your options here, just click one, two, three in the check boxes. And just, again, we're going through this quickly. We'll explain it all later, but right now this is what you need to do. Uh, I have other videos that explain this more, but for, to make this very simple out of the box, I uh, just do all this here, make sure these three boxes are checked. And again, pause the video if it's going too fast so you can at least make sure your screen looks identical to mine. That's all you have to do, very simple, okay? And then from here, go to application settings. And then um, we have an option to put another backup folder. So click select folder and go back to your documents and go back to your X9 Lite customer folder and then click backup again and click select folder. Now, again, pause, look at this screen. This is what your application settings need to look like. So once your application setting page looks like this and your radio profile settings look like this, click OK. All right. Now we have already done everything else. Everything is in the folder that I gave you. So check this out. Now we're going to take our radio and I'm going to now swap screens here. So let's do this. All right. So we're going to take our radio and we're going to power it off. Okay. Just like this. Just hold the power button down. Okay. Now you're going to take your sliders right here, hold them in and press your power button and let go quickly. Just like that. Okay, and what you're going to get is you're going to see here, keep note of this, you have a bootloader 2.3.0. It says something about writing firmware, restoring EEPROM, or exiting. And it looks at, look at your firmware. Firmware is X3-2.3.0. Now watch what happens. It tells you here, it prompts you at the bottom, plug in your USB cable. So that's what we're going to do. Now get your USB cable, all right? And you've got your memory stick in there, so now get your USB cable and plug it in. Okay, now you are you just heard the computer initialize. If you did this right, your computer just made that same uh, beep like when you plug in your flight controller. Okay, and now we're going to swap screens again, and there we go, all right? So from here, what we want to do is, usually we would go to our downloads and do all that, but I've already done this for you. So if you're running 2.3.7, right? Now, if 2.3.8 comes out, and this is 2.3.7, I don't have a video for 2.3.8, just hit me up again. Go to our contact page right there, boom. Send me a, a through the contact page, say, hey, I need uh, OpenTX 2.3.8 file set up. Knock it out for you real quickly, okay? So uh, this, is, this screen that popped up right now is because it's reading our um, SD card. Okay, so uh, we're gonna delete all this. I mean, we're gonna close all those down. And all we wanna do is we wanna synchronize our, um, uh, our SD card folder with our SD card in the, in the radio, right? So you see this icon right here, just click that. And it's gonna tell you where do you want your um, SD cards to come from. And it's gonna be that, we already told it, that SD card folder in our X9 Lite customer. But now it says it does not see uh, SD card in your uh, radio, so click this uh, folder here and go to your, see where it says new volume D? Remember we left the name new volume and format it, click that, and then click select folder, okay? And now what you wanna do is just click start. Leave everything else like it is, look at my screen, click start. That's it, now watch what happens, okay? Now it's gonna be creating it. So while it's creating it, right, it's, it's just gonna keep going through all this list, and you're gonna see it's gonna take a little while, but then at some point it like really speeds up, all right? Once that's done, We've already saved you from having to download the SD card contents, the full file, which is 10 times larger than what I've given you. We've already saved you from having to go search for 2.3.7. Uh, We've already saved you from having to even do the firmware file um, uh, locations for XM Plus for the X9 Lite from FreeSky, the, uh, the uh, internal module, and we've already uh, downloaded the firmware that it's needed, so you don't have to worry about any of this. And where is all that located? Let me show you. So on, while this is updating, let me just show you what we got. So in that, in that SD card contents, this one that you zipped, uh, that you unzipped and you named here, watch this. Look at what you got. In your firmware folder, I made you three folders already, okay? And in there, your RX, there's your XM Plus firmware. And in your TX, there's your X9 Lite ISRM firmware. And then in your OpenTX, there is the one that we just, uh, the, the, the newest one that was downloaded today. So really, you don't have to worry about anything. Just do this part, man, and you're set. Now, if you want to go through the full steps of how to do this, I have videos out there. As a matter of fact, if you go to the web page, uh, the one I just showed you from my website right here, and sorry, this is going to be in the way, but if you go to this one and you start watching, you watch this video right here, that one walks you through everything, okay? And you download the files on your own. But since I've been doing this so much and so commonly, I figured, well, look, once you've seen it one time, you've seen it 
that's it. Now it's time to just get the files to come on faster, okay? So here we go. We're going to put this here. We're going to go right here. Boom. All right. Okay, now, don't forget, we still got our XM Plus to, um, to uh, flash right here, right? So we got to do that. And, um, and uh, we've got our update cable that we're going to need. And I've given you a link to all that again on our website, if you look right here. Let me move this out of the way again. See, you've got the X-Lite transmitter. I give you the link to that, to the receiver, to the update cable, to the HDLRC, because we're doing a Sector 5 today, and then to the Toolkit RC, which is actually this device right here that I use a lot to when I'm doing uh, receiver work. And uh, and then you're going to see everything else down here, okay? I, the only thing I forgot to put up here is the 18650 batteries, which I'm going to do. All right, so it says we're done. Look, there's no errors. We had all the files were copied over. Um, I think we're good. Nothing was skipped, so, so we're good to go. Now, let's look at our contents folder real quick. Okay, and we're going to go to our right here. I want to see what's in the EEPROM. EEPROM, what is that? Let me see. 1109. Okay, and then let me go here. I, I'm doing this just because I'm curious to see on my own uh, what we have in the um, in the EEPROM that was originally copied over. So let me go to the, uh, where is it? X9 Lite Customer up here, and then I'm going to go to SD card. I'm going to go to EEPROM, and I'm going to see if these are identical. Uh, they should be. I think it's going to end up rewriting it anyway. Okay, so once you're done here, you can click Close. All right, and that's it. So now here's the cool part, right? Um, you can literally unplug the radio and do everything else, but I'm gonna, since it's plugged into the computer, I'm gonna go ahead and do this from the program itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna now come over here to this icon right here, and it's gonna say, uh, sorry, this one right here, it's gonna say write firmware to radio. Click that, and it's gonna look, it wants to know where your firmware is, so click load, and then go to that um, uh, documents folder, and then go to your X9 Lite customer folder right here, and then go to your SD card, go to your firmware, Go to your OpenTX and click on the file that I put in there. And there you go, right? And just click Write to TX. That's it. It's that simple, guys. You don't have to worry about anything else. And when it's done, we'll be able to get out of this, and I'm going to show you what else you do next, okay? So it says not responding. Give it a second. Okay, close. Done. All right. Now, as far as this goes, really, we're done now. Everything's finished, okay? Um, so what we want to do now is... Uh, is um, we can disconnect this, I guess. So let's go ahead and uh, right click on your USB icon right here and left click on eject Tyrannus. Okay, and it's gonna run that and then click this black box right here and it's gonna bring it up. Right click on it again and click eject new volume. There you go. Now your radio is ready to be disconnected. So at this point, unplug it just like that. And now we're gonna go to the bigger screen here. Okay, now you see how it says, look at the bottom here. It says X9 Lite 2.3.7. That's the one that we download, right? But you see the OTX bootloader, right? It says 2.3.0. We're going to fix that in just a second. So just take your little uh, flywheel here and click exit. It's going to boot back up. Okay, and it's going to tell you bad EEPROM data. Press any key. It's going to format the EEPROM. Welcome to it, And there you go. Now, it's going to select the model type. So we're going to go ahead and go to multi. Okay. And for right now, just, uh, sorry, just, uh, let me see. What is this? Click page. Page, 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 page. And just keep going. All right. And then enter, it says hold this for a long time to confirm. So just hold it, there you go. Now it wants us to calibrate, right? So go ahead and set all your sticks in the center because it sets set sticks at midpoint. That includes this rolling, uh, the scroll here. So let's do that one and uh, everything else is actually set. So uh, let's go ahead and once it's set in the center, go ahead and click enter. And now it wants us to move the sticks around. So go ahead and move your sticks and go left, Right, and then go the back way, but don't press hard, okay? Because you're kind of trying to mimic when you're flying. Once you've done it that way, just go left and right, and up and down, and left and right, left and right, up and down, and then again, left and right, left and right. There you go, up and down, and then go corner to corner. Let's go back the other way, all right? And then turn your knob like that. And there's a little dial right here. There you go. And then when you're done, hit enter. Boom, now you're calibrated. There's your model, we're good to go. So now what we want to do is we want to go to menu, okay? And um, again, because we have the bootloader, we need to update. So hold your menu button down, right? And then click page. And here's, look at your SD card contents. Everything that we did is right here. Click firmware, go to your OpenTX, find that file again that we already put on here, and hold the enter button down, and then it's gonna say flash bootloader. We're gonna flash it. Watch this, okay? It's done, we're gonna click exit. Now watch, I'm gonna turn this off. Now, I want you to see the bootloader, so I'm gonna go ahead and press these again inside, and press this real quickly, and then they go watch. Okay, now look. 
We have OTX bootloader 2.3.7, and we have X9 Lite 2.3.7. Man, we're perfect. We got all the firmware we need. Okay. Welcome to our PTS. Now it's talking to us. Everything's Trouble good. Warning. Okay. Yeah, we got to put our throttle down. Okay. Now the other thing that we want to do though is we want to go ahead. Now we have. Don't forget we have the internal module that we're going to flash on this radio, right? So what we're going to do is, and again to check if you need to flash it. Watch this. So if you go to menu and hold it down, and then you press page. Okay. Don't forget here. You see how on the uh, modules and RX versions, watch. See how uh, internal module, uh, let me go ahead and, hold on. Let me go ahead and turn that, uh, let me turn that back on here. So let me go under our, our page here because that's not going to show us our internal module until um, I turn it on. So let me go to internal module and we're going to turn that on. Okay, and we're going to run ACCST for this one. But let me just get out now and this way we can, um, this way we can see what our internal module firmware is. So check this out, okay? See how we're running 1.1.1? Well, the new one is 1.1.3, right? So we wanna go ahead and update that. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna hold our menu button down, then we're gonna press page one time, go to our firmware, click enter, go down to TX, FrySky TX, click enter, and there it is, the ISRM 1.1.3. So we're gonna click that one time, and we're gonna go down, and we're gonna hold the enter button down for just a second, and then it's going to say, do you want to flash S port, internal, external? Well, this is the internal module, so you're going to flash internal. Click that. Now it's going to automatically go ahead and flash that to the 1.1.3. And again, you didn't even have to go to the FreeSky website to download it. It's all in your folder, so you're good to go. Okay? So we're going to let that run for a second. While that's running, we're going to go ahead and take our XM+. Plus. Now this will apply to XM+, Plus, RxSR, XM4SB. I mean, pretty much every controller you have, unless you're running Access. And if you're running Access, you can use OTA uh, over the air. But um, if not, then we're going to be using the cable to update these things. So watch. I'm going to go ahead and open this new XM Plus receiver. Pull the contents out. Okay. Now, I really don't care about any of the rest of these things. What I care about right now is just this receiver and the way we're going to orient it with the diagram. See the diagram here that it comes with? It tells you right now, S bus, 5 volt, and ground. And it tells you the bind buttons here, which means you cannot be looking at this like this because there's no bind button here. So you want to go ahead and look at it this way. It shows you the antennas are on the side. So if you look at it here, we can see this first circle is going to be ground. The second circle is going to be 5 volt. And the third circle is going to be your S bus. What we want to do is we want to update this, right? So you use an update cable. And I gave you a link to that on the website. You see this update cable actually plug into your radio right here. And these three pins, let me show you. See those three pins right there? Let me see if I can turn this enough. Right there, okay? And so we're going to plug it in. And we're going to plug it into where the ground or the black wire is on the outside uh, to the right and the yellow wire is on the inside. Now you can get this cable from my website, okay? So all you have to do, again, is you're just going to go, let me go here. And all you're going to do is just go to our website. And then in this tutorial page, you can go right here, update cable. And it's going to automatically take you to that page and it's two bucks and you can order it. We can get it out immediately, okay? So let me go back now. All right, now let's get back to business here. There we go. All right, so while we're back here, we want to go ahead and prepare this to be updated. So the way I recommend this is as long as you haven't soldered this yet, uh, these will fit right through the holes perfectly. So we want, to put, um, we want to put ground in. And to make sure these fit easily, just go one up, the second one down, and the third one up. And it has ample room then. And with the actual tension on it, it'll hold it in place. So you want to have it just like this. There you go. Okay, and as long as it sits like that, each one's making enough connection. I want to try to get it to where you can see the lights blinking. So that's why I'm going to hold it. But normally I just leave it on the table. So we're going to wait for this to get done writing, right? And once that's done writing, we're going to go ahead and flash um, the receiver, okay? Oh, that's good coffee. I love my wife. She just loves taking, she takes such good care of me. And this coffee is one of the, one of the perks. I mean, I love it. Mm, so good. All right, here we go. We're about to be done. Okay, all right, perfect. <sighs> okay, so that's done. So we're gonna click okay, and then we're gonna click exit. And then we're, you see how we're at the two dots now? Just click that enter on the two dots, click it again. So all we're doing is going back, right? Uh, I keep, I keep, when I click enter, I always scroll by accident. Okay, now we're gonna go to the FR Sky RX. So let's click that. And then you see where we have the XM Plus already loaded. That's on your file already. I already put that on there, click that. And then this is the most recent update prior to the version 2.1.0, 2.x.x, which we're not going to use. I can't stand it. Uh, it has caused too many problems, and I'm not really sure why they're doing it. It looks like they're trying to block out any third-party um, ability to use third-party receivers. And so I would tell you, do not upgrade to the 2.x.x versions at all. Uh, we have these legacy versions. I have them on my website. I have them on my servers. If you need them and you can't find them, please just let me know, and I'll hook you up with them, okay? But anyways, I've already put it here, so just go to that folder. 
Click enter. Now we're gonna use the um, uh, RSSI 16. I'm gonna just go to 16 if you want. Uh, you could use that. Um, if you don't want RSSI, that's fine. But I, I, I set up my radio with, uh, we have four channels for our uh, inputs from our sticks. And then I have um, arm, mode, uh, and you could do fail safe if you want uh, with buzzer on it, or you can make it two different ones. Um, in this case, I'll just probably, uh, if I have, let me see. Yeah, it all depends on how many three-way switches. Okay, because we only have, actually, we've got enough to where we could do the eight if we wanted to. Uh, but I just for right now, uh, I'm not worried about the latency. Just do the XM plus the first one, okay? With uh, RSSI 16, hold that down for a second, and it's gonna say you wanna flash S port internal extra. Well, this is the S port. So go ahead and click that, and now watch. You're gonna see this start lighting up. See how that red light comes on? Okay, now I'm gonna to try to let this go. Yeah, it just says not responding because um, I, I moved it. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll hold it. Fine, fine, fine. Just give me a break, would you? All right, so let's do that. Flash S port, and I'll just hold it. So you see the red light. And I'm not sure what I'm doing here now, but this is not, I'm not getting it to respond. So hold on, let me see if I can make this work better. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what have I got here? This should be working without any problem. I don't, I don't think, I think we're making good connection on all these. But, uh, let me see, what am I missing here? This is my luck for trying to do this this way. Uh, you know what, I'm wondering actually, hold on a second. There may be something different with this, but let me just see. I'll try to hold these a little different. Let me see if I turn this around because I did edit this cable, so I'm just wondering. I don't know if that's going to be it. There we go. Sorry, I had my cable backwards. Um, the 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 ground is actually going to go to the left, not the right. I was working on X9D Plus um, uh, recently, not the 2019, but the early ones, and it actually goes to the right, and so that's my mistake. So, anyways, put your put your cable in where it's black, red, yellow, just like it is on the QX7 and everything else. My brain's getting a little fried here. So if we're gonna let this update, you can see the lights blinking here, I hope. I don't know if my finger's blocked it, but there you go. You can see the, the red and the green uh, going, okay? And we're almost done. And now we're done. Okay, so here's the cool part now. Just click exit, all right? Take this out. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna actually plug this in now. I'm gonna show you how this works. So we're gonna bind this real quick to make sure everything's working before we go and put it in the receiver, right? or I mean in the, uh, in the uh, quad. So I'm gonna plug this into my Toolkit RC. So let me just get this in there just like that. All right, now I'm gonna leave this here and I'm gonna get my power source right here. And I'm always, again, I'm always using my um, uh, smoke stopper. There we go. And again, we sell the smoke stoppers on our website too, so anything you need. But what I, basically what I wanna do is this, this Toolkit RC, uh, most of you see me do this before, it actually powers up the, um, the receiver, and then you can watch the uh, inputs from your radio to make sure it's working properly. So let me just put these pins back in. Let's put positive, come on, there we go. And we're gonna put ground, going down. And again, like I said, you don't have to hold it. I was screwing up on the last one by, uh, by uh, having the, the cable backwards, that's my fault. Again, I've, been do I've probably done about 20 radios in the last two days and I'm just, they're all starting to look the same. All right, so there we go. So we're gonna leave that just like that, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead to bind it. Don't forget, you gotta hold the uh, bind button down when you power it up. So I'm gonna hold the bind button down, I'm gonna power up. Okay, and there we go. And what you can see right now is you can see a solid green. I don't know if you can see that well, but there's a solid green and a solid uh, red light. And I, I guess you can't really see that too well because that red light's very powerful. The green light isn't. But in either case, now I'm gonna get my radio. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna get my radio. Under model one, I'm gonna hit menu. Real quick, tap on menu, and then I'm gonna hit page. And I'm gonna to scroll to the left because I wanna go from the bottom up. So what I wanna make sure first is I have my internal uh, receiver, or my internal, uh, sorry, transmitter on, and it's gonna be on ACC D16. That's what this uh, receiver is. So people who say you cannot run D16 on x Lite radio, you can, obviously. Um, so, and, and because this is model one, I'm gonna to go to my RX number. Let's see if I can make some room here so you can see that. I'm gonna to go to my RX number over here. Okay, and I'm just gonna click it and roll it to one. That way my RX matches my model so they're always the same. Everything else is good. Channels one through 16 is fine. 
And then I'm going to click buy. Now that yellow, that red light should start blinking hopefully. So here goes. Let's go to 16, 9 through 16 telemetry on because we did the 9 through 16 firmware on here, right? Watch. And you see the red light now blinking? Perfect. Once it's blinking, you're done. You can hit the exit button here and then hit it again and then hit it again. And now you're back at the screen. And now you want to go ahead and turn your radio, uh, turn your receiver off for a second. on all right so we've got our green now um i had a loose wire here one of these one of these uh, servo wires was not holding properly again it's just a long day and i guess uh, I, these wires maybe they're just a little loose i don't know but the receiver itself is bound properly everything's fine uh so let me go ahead and hit enter and then i'm going to go down enter and now look see how you can see the movement so we know that we've got input working perfectly okay so there you go all right now we need to set up our switches properly. That's the only other thing left to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now I know this is gonna start blinking. There you go, because I just touched it and I'm gonna turn that off real quickly. So let's do this real quick now. So now what we wanna do is we wanna set up our channels, right? And uh, because they're not set up properly here and you know, it's funny, I'm thinking maybe I should make a model for this one too. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up in here and uh, then I'll copy this model so you guys can have that in your downloads as well, okay? Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit uh, menu. Okay, actually, you know what I'm trying to think is, I wonder if I can just do it on the, oh, never mind, I'll do it here. So what you wanna do is you wanna go and you wanna edit your menu, your model now, right? So hit menu one time, then press page, and uh, let's just call this, I'm gonna name it for this guy, I'm just gonna call it HGLRC, H, G, L, R, C. Okay, now let me hit uh, exit. Actually, you know what? I need to change that because if I use this as the model for you guys, then it, you guys may not end up with an ACLRC. CY, let me see. We'll just call it Cyclone FPV. And then you guys can change it if you want. But it doesn't have to be on an HDLRC system. That's why I don't want it to be like that. Cyclone. And then see, I think I got enough space to do FPV. I think it allows me. Let me see. Yeah, okay. So I just kind of went through that quickly just to make sure I wasn't wasting the F. Let's go down to V. And remember, if you want to go caps, just hold the enter button down for a second. There you go. Okay, so Cyclone FEV, that's the name of our, our model here. Let's click, uh, uh, we're going to get out of that. And let's go now menu and page again. And um, I think everything else for the most part is going to be fine. So what we want to do now is <clears throat> we want to uh, go and click page and page. Okay, so you see how we have all these? Uh, we don't have any switches set properly. So what we want to do is we want to program our switches now. So we're going to hit this. Uh, we're basically under your inputs menu here, you're gonna scroll down to number five, hit your enter button, hold it down and hit edit. Okay, if, if you've already got something there, hold it down and hit edit. And what you wanna do is you wanna type a name here. So this is gonna be our arm switch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my time actually to do this with capitals and everything. So let's just do arm. Uh, okay, arm, there we go. And then for a name, we're gonna do arm again. Now you don't have to do all this, but if you, I'm very picky about it being consistent with all my models. So R, oops, damn it, I'm sorry, R, let's go to M. Now you can do this from OpenTX as well, but I'm not gonna mess with it right now. Okay, so once you get, oops, once you get it done, hit exit. Now you're gonna go to your source, right? Once you go to your source, now I'm gonna use a three-way switch, and three-way switch is because I wanna have a middle spot in case I accidentally bump it, so I don't disarm it. Just go with me on this one. So we're gonna use the top left switch for arming, right? So click this. And when you see it blinking right here, flip your switch. It automatically designate the switch that you're talking about. So hit enter again and you're done. Now you can hit exit and exit again. And we're gonna go to number six now. Number six is gonna be our mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to mode, HKLM, hold the, hold the button for caps, M, O, D. And you can only put three letters, so that's fine. Now go to name and you can put the whole thing. So let's go to M. Okay, we're gonna hit exit, and we're gonna go source again, and on source, click it, and for, for modes, I'm gonna use this three-way switch. So just flip it a couple times, then hit exit. Now you got SC, hit exit again, and exit one more time. So that's uh, channel number six, okay? And now we're gonna go to channel number seven, and on this one, we're gonna call this uh, failsafe, okay? So F, hold it, and then we're just gonna A, and then we're gonna just put I. 
because you can only put three letters, right? So I. All right, and then go down to name, and then now you can put the full thing. So F, hold it, F, A, I, and then just go to L, fail. Okay, and then hit exit. There you go. Now go to your source, click it, and we're going to use this three-way switch here. Okay, and once that's done, hit exit, exit, exit. Now look at that. You've got all your um, inputs set for what we need, okay? Now press page again. Now you're going to go to your mixes, okay? So check this out. So on your mixes, you have um, channel 5. If you use the default from the radio when you were setting it up, then you're going to change this anyway. So just go to your channel 5, hold it down and hit edit, okay? And you have your name as arm. It copied that over from the inputs. For your source, though, you want to change that. You, if it's if it's if there was something already in this slot in the mixes slot when you got there then you need to change it if you're first time setting it up it'll auto fill it properly you want to scroll until you get I where the input is I and then the word arm okay now hit exit exit again okay and then s and then you're gonna go to six and you're gonna click edit and, and that's gonna be um, that's our mode so oops so we're gonna say our mixer name is gonna be M And this is, like I said, only if there's something in there. If it's not in there, then you don't have to, you can just set it up yourself like it's never been done before. But I'm just going to adjust what they've got, right? And then we're going to get rid of this and get rid of that, okay? And then our source is going to be I mode, right? Right there, exit, perfect, okay? And then we're going to go to channel 7, which is our fail. Hold that down, hit edit. And then, uh, six, seven, yeah, okay, so 7, edit. And we're going to call this one, they have it as mode, but that's not the way we set it up. F, and we're going to go to A, I, L, and then we can exit. And then for the input, again, scroll till you get to right there. And now you're done. Okay? So now, if you look here, everything is set. You've got your mixes. And if you go hold page down for a second, you're going to go back. You're going to see it here. Everything's set. Okay? Your radio is now perfect and ready to go. And if you if you watch now when I turn this on, hopefully it'll stay green. I don't know if you can see that screen here. Yeah, my lights are all kind of screwed up, but there you go. So if you see this and I go to measure now. Oh my gosh, come on. Okay, so watch this now. Look, see if I, well, I'm not using that switch actually. Look, there's my arm, there's my mode, there's my fail, okay? And there's my sticks. So man, everything is perfect and programmed. So now it's time to put it in the quad. All right, so we're gonna power this down. Okay, and we're gonna power off our receiver. And we're now gonna get ready to solder it into the quad. So let me grab that quad real quick. All right guys, I had a small video issue here. And it, again, my video paused and I think I, I realize what it is now, but I apologize for jumping around. So um, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, quad open now and get started on mounting this uh, uh, receiver. or putting it in the quad here, this uh, new uh, Sector 5 4S. Okay, so let's get this out. Okay, and uh, what you didn't see because the camera, I did lose that video there for just a second, is all I did was I took the XM Plus here. All right, it's the same one we just did, but I added the wires onto it, put some heat shrink on it. Even though I know HDLRC is going to give wires, uh, when you get their quads here, you can see the wires are on here. But because I'd have to terminate them anyway, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Let me just go ahead and get this off real quick, and then we take it from there. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I won't use theirs necessarily if I've got extra wire, only because theirs comes terminated and this receiver isn't. So then I'd have to cut the termination off, and then I'd have to, and then I'm like, that's just too much work. So I might as well just go ahead and do it myself, and then just remove their wires, which was much quicker and much easier. So what we're going to do now is going to go ahead and install this. Um, so let me get this in here. And it's going to be a very quick install at this point. Everything, the long part of this is already done. Uh, so now all I need to do is just do this part. And um, so let me take this plate off right here. And as you can see right here, you see how their wires are already on here. We're just going to go ahead and remove those. So that's S bus, 5 volt, and ground. And we're going to go ahead and add ours that I've already done. So let me do that real quick. Let me get my tweezers. And we're going to do this again. So we're going to go make some space here we're just going to go s bus okay and then let's do five volt sorry i don't have my magnifiers on so kind of just trying to get used to just using my glasses if at all possible 
and it does cause a small delay for me sometimes, but it's worth it. I want to get my eyes to not be so dependent on a magnifying glass. It seems to wear them out. All right, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and just put a small dab of glue right here. I like to hold those in place, and I find that this glue does an excellent job of it. Okay, all right, so there we go. So that's done. So now our receiver's done. Now, I want to show you guys how this is going to work, but to do that, I have to disconnect the VTX because usually this VTX will knock out our, our video feed since everything's run on Wi-Fi here. So let me just go ahead and pull this out real quick. And then we can power this up and you can see in beta flight what we're doing. All right, so there's that. Here's our receiver. And so I'm gonna try to make enough room so we can see everything. So there's our receiver and here's our radio, right? Just like that. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go beta flight. I'm gonna put all those in the top there and we're gonna start, we're gonna connect. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna connect. Uh, I'm gonna use my smoke stopper here and make a safe connection. Uh, here's a smoke stopper right here, if you can see that. Okay, and guys, we sell these on the website. Make sure if you don't have one, they're a really good investment to have. All right, let's put that on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass up. There we go, we hear it start up. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my USB so I can get beta flight feed on this. There we go, perfect. And now I'm gonna power up my radio. Okay. Welcome to Open TX. Yes, yes. Okay. Throttle right. warning. Okay, so we're going to connect. And um, we want to go to our ports and make sure everything on our ports is set up properly. Uh, and it looks good. Everything else here looks really good. So that's good right there. Uh, and let's see what else we want to do. Uh, let's go to our configuration. Okay. We've got everything set here. I am going to tell it. Uh, let me see. Okay, I suppose, okay, okay, excellent, that looks good. So I'm gonna click save on that. I haven't done anything, but I always, just out of habit, just do save. All right, there we go. Um, and so that's that, right? And so now what we wanna do is let's go ahead and connect again. And um, I turn this over so you can see the light here. So let's go to, uh, we're gonna go to our receiver now, okay? So first thing is, if you see your receiver, if you see your quad spinning out of, crazy like that. Drop this down and go to the T-A-E-R and click save. Uh, and, oops, sorry, let me do that. No, I apologize. I had this entire thing wrong. Uh, I had my throttle all the way up, cranked up. So let me see where we're at here. Uh, okay, so, sorry, this is something that you need to set up in here. So if you go to menu and you go to page, page, and just keep going, you see this uh, setup right here? Now let's go ahead and set the date. I, I meant to do this initially. Um, let's go ahead and set the date, uh, 2020. And it is the fourth month. And I'm gonna tell you why it's rotating out of control here in just a second, but I, while I'm doing that, might as well. Uh, it is uh, 157, so that is gonna be 1357. And let's go down, let's go down here. Okay. So um, we are needing to go to mode two, and I meant to tell it that. And so, and we can, we can change this to be T-A-E-R, however, T-A-E-R if you want. There we go, okay, and we are on mode two. So what that thing was doing was doing mode one, all right, which is not a good idea. See how everything's quiet now? Everything's done spinning like crazy? Excellent, okay. So once you do all that, just hit exit, exit. And I should have, I should have said at the beginning is you have to set mode one, mode two. I, I didn't even check to see that. Um, okay, so the next thing we wanna do now, now that this is set up, one thing we wanna do is we wanna look at our, our range here, okay? And this is, I'm actually got a customer that's asking me about this right now, so I want you to look at something. Um, the main thing is you want this to be here at 1500, okay? And it's gonna be for the most part close, but that little bit right there, uh, I would try to go and adjust it. So to do that, you hold your, uh, you hold your uh, menu one time, see your model and just start clicking page, okay? And you're gonna to get to something called inputs here, right? So you have your input one, and input one, we're gonna edit that. And if you look at what you're talking about for input one, right, that's gonna be your roll. So you wanna find your uh, roll here and what you're gonna have here is your right stick, okay? So on your right stick, we're gonna call this roll. So go ahead and name it roll. Okay, and now what we wanna do is we make sure our minimum, so if you go all the way to the right, it goes to 987, so go to minimum here Okay, and um, hopefully you can see that. I think you can. Uh, but you want to go to your minimum screen, and maybe I should just swap screens here. Okay, so you want to go down to your minimum screen here, right? And you want to click it, and you want to turn that until your beta flight shows you at a value of 1,000 when you're at your minimum, right there. 
Okay, and it should be close to what your radio is also showing. It's going to be within a little bit. So if I click it and go to my radio to see a thousand, beta flight still says a thousand, so we're good. Now go to your max. Max is 2012, so go down to max, click it, and roll down because it needs to be 2000. And now beta flight shows 2000. And then your middle should always be 1500, which is your sub trim. Okay, so we don't have to adjust that. Now let's hit exit. All right, now let's go to the second one. Second channel right here is going to be your pitch. Okay. So um, what you want to do here is it's still going to be the right stick, and it's going to be now your up and down. So you want to go ahead, edit it, and you want to name it pitch. So let's go to P. And I will, like I said, I will add this model to your file so it's in the models. Um, it's in the models uh, folder. Okay. Whoops. P I T. I don't think you can put a, a four, five letters, so we're just going to pick C. Okay, there we go. And now look at what we've got. So on our minimum again, we're at 987. So let's go to our minimum setting. At, whoops, that's our maximum. Let's go to our minimum setting and roll that up. We gotta get to a thousand. I, I went way too quick. There we go. And then let's go to our maximum and hold to the maximum and roll it down till we get to 2000. There we go. Perfect. So now we are set, okay? And now let's go to our yaw. So if you look at our yaw right here, again, it's the same thing, so we can hit exit. And we can go to number, well, we can do throttle, I guess, so that'll be number three. So number three, uh, channel three is gonna be throttle, so let's go ahead and just put T. Cap, and then just do H. And then you can put R. And then you can put it O, I guess. Okay? Now on throttle, you're at 987, so go to your minimum and go to where it reads 1,000. Then go to your maximum. Oops, I'm gonna go back to my minimum. I thought I was out of that. Okay, then scroll down to your maximum, push the throttle all the way up, and scroll down until you get to 2,000. Excellent, okay? You can exit. Now we're gonna go to channel four, and that's gonna be our yaw. So let's let's change the name here to W or, ugh. Sorry, Y, A, W, okay? And from there, uh, again, we're at our minimum, so we're gonna go down to our minimum, and we're gonna raise it till it reads 1,000. And we're gonna go to our maximum, and we're gonna lower it till it reads 2,000. And I think this is the one that was bouncing in the middle, but now it looks good, actually. Everything looks really good. So there you go, you got 1,500, and if you look at these now, look at that. You've got 1,500 in the middle for everything, and then you've got 1,000, so you're good to go. Okay, now we're going to go to our threshold here and leave that, and this one at 2,000, that's perfect. So now let's go to our modes, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to remove all these so I can show you exactly how I set them up. Okay. All right, so first thing is, click Save. Now, under your receiver, if you flip the switches that I programmed, you're going to see them. Look at that. Uh, auxiliary 1 is going to be our arm switch. Auxiliary two is gonna, or, or is gonna be our modes. Auxiliary three is gonna be our fail safe. So all we're gonna do is come to our modes here and we're gonna go to arm and we're gonna flip the arm switch. Okay, and we're gonna set this for middle and end. And then we're gonna go to horizon and we're gonna go to our mode switch and we're gonna set this for the end. And we're gonna go to our fail safe and we're gonna set, flip this switch and we're gonna set this for our end. And then we're gonna go to beeper and we're gonna flip the same switch to fail switch but we're gonna set it for middle and end. And then we're going to go to our air mode. Let me delete that real quick and then add it. And we're going to flip our mode switch here. And we're going to leave it in the middle. Okay, now, let me explain to you what I just did. Let me flip everything down because now it's going to freak out. Okay, look, first thing I did was I said, here's our arm switch, which is auxiliary one. If you're in the middle or you're at the top, you're armed. Okay, in horizon, in the in our horizon option, which is our mode switch over here, I said, if you're all the way up, you're in horizon. If you're in the middle, let's scroll down. You're in air mode with acro, and if you're in the top, you're just in acro without air mode. So you've got acro, acro with air, and horizon. Okay, let's go to our fail safe. Our fail safe says that if it's all the way down, we want fail safe to kick in. If it's in the middle, we just want our buzzer to kick in. Okay, and that's it. So now we click save, and we can go to our motors, and we can arm it, and there you go. Everything's spinning perfectly. Okay. Yep, it's perfect, and that's that. Now, I believe, um, let's see, I think that's actually gonna be about it, so let me just 
Turn that off. Okay. And you can now exit out of your radio. And look at that. We're done. That's it. Everything's set up, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now. This is ready to go. Okay. Now we're kicking a fail safe because it lost signal. So I'm going to unplug that. We don't need to deal with that anymore. And I'm going to um, disconnect here. Okay. We're going to shut this down. All I got to do now is just mount the receiver and we're done. So I'm going to mount the receiver. It's already bound. And I do not, I, I fight with these things all the time. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can get this to work okay. But uh, I'm going to put the VTX back in now because we need to get that done. Right. It's got to ship with the VTX. Plug in. All right. And now I'm just going to feed the receiver wire because this power is going to go here. So I want to feed the receiver wire through this little bit here. And it's going to be mounted upside down like this on the top plate. So let me just kind of see if I can get this to go through. And if not, honestly, this is not really a big part of the video. Um, I have battled with this plenty of times and I get tired of it. So if I can get it, great. If not, I've got lunch waiting and I want to knock this out and get this ready to go today. So let's see what we got. We'll get one chance at it and see what happens. Okay. Okay. So there's our wires there, our antennas. And now I'm going to see if I get this to go through. And I hate this more than anything is trying to feed these wires through this little opening that they think I can see, which I can't. All right. So um, don't see it. I'll try this way. If I can't see it, then that's, we'll just call it a day. And I'll go on the outside of this because honestly, I can't even see through these holes here. I don't even think they're open. Uh, no, I don't see it open. So hey, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these back in like that and like this I really don't like this print I don't like what they've done with this but it's, it's such an insignificant part that I'm not really worried about it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come down from here oh, actually I can come out right here to be honest with you I can come out just like this so check this I'll just come out this way so it doesn't get in the way of anything and get this wire here. Let me get the other one too. There we go. We'll feed both of these through here. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay. This will come out like that. this way. Come on. I guess we can just make the screen bigger. Sorry guys. There we go. Okay. This way the wire can still sit here. And the receiver can be done and we can mount the receiver the bottom plate here, which is what I'm going to do. About here. Mount that just like that. There we go. Screw this back on, and then I will heat shrink uh, this together, and we'll be done. There we go. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these on here, but keep them out of the way. That way they'll be nicely put on. The, there won't be any problems. So let me go ahead and close this up now. If you shrink that, and guys, we are done, and this thing is ready to go. That was an awesome, quick, hopefully quick, uh, setup. That file really helps. So you'll be good to go. Let me do that. There we go.
there it is. So this is ready to go. This is good here. And this one can be mounted here. And it'll be out of the way of everything here, just like that. So let's go ahead and put, uh, I don't know, two little pieces on. So let's do this one here, just like that. And let's do this one here, just like that. They will both remain out of the BTX path. And then we'll angle them up so that they can come out looking really good here. Okay, so just like this. we go. So we've got everything set up. That should hold pretty nicely. Everything's finished. Receiver's in good. Everything's tied up. And so here is the final product. Okay. So we've got everything hooked up. We've got the antennas on. I really don't like that TPU print. Maybe we'll come up with something new to put on some of the ones that we do for our customers. But everything's set up in there perfectly and it's ready to go. Okay, guys. So hopefully that helps you guys with setting up your X9 light. Again, if you have any questions, please go to our cyclonefv.com and use our contact page and you can reach me at any time that way. And then as always, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just help support us, okay? Other than that, guys, that's it. Have fun with your family. Spend time. You never know how much time you have left with them. So please make the most of it. Be safe and God bless. Other than that, enjoy your weekend. Happy Easter, guys. Peace.